Hello and welcome to the Divine Love Sanctuary and Lightbringers in celebrating the 100th anniversary of Jane Z. Paget passing into spirit. Divine Love Sanctuary mm -hmm. Foundation's mm -hmm. weekly online circle of light is be being dedicated to the legacy of James Paget with special guests Dennis Gourmet, Cliff Dora, and Bill Fraze. And now your special host, Al and Jean Fike. Thank you, Brooke. We welcome you to stand with us for this special event, the 100th anniversary, 100 years ago today, James Paget passed into spirit. And I wonder, would any of us here on this screen even be here today if it wasn't for this wonderful life of service and dedication? So I would like to welcome our three special guests. And um, we're going to welcome them in their order of appearance and then flawlessly, seamlessly, uh, each one will just step up and uh, do their part um, for this time that we have together. So first is our dear brother, Dennis Torme from Menifee, California, and like James Paget, also an attorney at law, and he's a world-class musician. Together with his wife, Susie, an esteemed researcher into the lives of James and Helen Paget. So Dennis will be uh, on first, and his talk is entitled from Seeds of Doubt. Dennis will be followed by Bill Fraze, no stranger to people on the screen here, a dedicated light worker known to us all. His talk is entitled, The Golden Thread of Truth. Following Bill, Dennis will return to sing the prayer. And then Cliff Dodora, from Northern California, who's been a dedicated divine love follower since he was introduced to the pageant messages as a teenager, will offer up the opening prayer, sometimes known amongst us as the prayer perfect, as it was received from Jesus more than a hundred years ago. And then who knows what the angels have in store for us during our sacred time of prayer. Dennis will then be back to offer up a joyful closing song to end part one of our sacred session tonight, our celebration. But if any of you would like to stick around for a while longer and join our three guest speakers in a discussion about the messages, about the life of James Paget, share your experiences during the prayer. You're all welcome to stay. And um, Brooke is going to keep our Zoom room open. So thank you all for coming today. And um, Dennis, over to you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. So you're probably familiar with that picture. Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today for this awesome celebration and remembering the life and the legacy of uh, Mr. James Edward Paget. I always feel like I'm preaching to the choir when I uh, speak to our divine love members because most of you all know who Mr. Paget is, and of course, his lovely wife, Helen. 
Don't worry, I'm not going to speak for a couple of hours tonight with a PowerPoint presentation with 156 slides. We'll save that for another time. But um, I could easily do that. <laughs> I, I even joked with Jean. I said, I don't, I don't know if... Uh, uh, she said, do you want to speak? And I said, well, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, Susie and I found the pageant messages together um, just about uh, a little over a decade ago. And I was strangely drawn to this character, uh, James Paget, when I learned he was an attorney in Washington, D.C. And when we stumbled onto the messages through Jeff Cutler's awesome website, New Birth, it's actually new-birth.net. Uh, if you haven't been there, please visit it. It is the most awesome uh, website. Anyways, I knew that I had to learn much more about this character, Mr. Paget. And... The Paget story resonated with me, obviously because he was an attorney and I'm an attorney. I could relate to the plight that James and Helen were traveling through because as Susie and I did research, the more and more we re researched them, we found just how ordinary people they were. They had their ups, they had their downs. They were up financially, they were down financially. At one point, they even separated, and, and, and Helen filed for divorce, made the headlines because he was an uh, attorney in Washington, D.C. But when he worked for local government, he worked for the District of Columbia, which is the equivalent of working for a county. I work for the county uh, here in Southern California, the largest county in the United States, San Bernardino County. So I felt that kind of connection with Paget, And then he went into uh, practicing law by himself as a sole practitioner, and then he had several law partners. And I practice law by myself. So if you read the messages, you could see his struggle. He's struggling financially. And then his wife dies, and he's lost. He has his Christian faith, his Methodist faith, but that's not enough. So Spiritualism was really popular, so he decides to go. Next thing you know, they're telling him he's a medium. Wow. You go from being an attorney in a well-established law firm, connect, his law partner connected all the way to Abraham Lincoln, to somebody telling you that you can talk to dead people. No wonder he had so much doubt. Um, if you saw the beautiful email that was sent out by the Foundation Church yesterday, it it was a wonderful, lengthy email t telling you why James Paget was selected for this particular task. Um, there's, he was filled with doubt, even to the very end. He he received messages from 1914 to just just a, the year before he died, I think 1922. And even in the very end, they're telling him, "You must believe. You must believe." And there was this one particular time, uh, I want to say it was around uh, July 17th, 1915, and James Paget received several messages in a row, all telling him, you have to believe, you have to believe, get rid of this doubt. He received a message from Andrew the Apostle, Peter the Apostle, John the Apostle, James the Apostle, Jerome, St. Anthony, and then his wife, Helen. And if that wasn't enough, the very next day, he received messages from St. Stephen, Barnabas, an apostle, Thomas, the apostle, yes, the doubting Thomas, the very one that was the doubting Thomas, Luke, the apostle, John Wesley, an English preacher, and then finally, Albert Riddle at the end of the second night. And, and James Paget still had this doubt. And I'll read you a little bit of what of what Riddle said because it really resonated with me <laughs> because I take things from a very logical, you know, I want to see the evidence uh, standpoint. And uh, Mr. Riddle said, I'm here, your old partner. Why, Paget? Such testimony as that would have established in court any fact that you or I might have asserted. Just think for a moment. Here are the witnesses of the highest character with the knowledge and opportunity for knowledge that cannot be disputed. 
and one identifying the other and all testifying in the most positive way as to that one particular fact. Who can say that there can be any possibility of mistake? Never in the world has a fact been more co conclusively proved. And if you doubt that you've been selected for this great work, I cannot understand the operation of your mind. <laughs> uh, what a friend Albert Riddle was. And, and he was somebody who knew nothing about divine love. I'm talking about Mr. Riddle. And by the time Paget was done receiving his messages and before he passed the spirit, Mr. Riddle himself was already in the celestial heavens. So the, the Paget messages are am amazing. And um, I'm going to drop an, another picture here. Because the, the picture Paget on the right is the young Paget. That's the picture that Susie and I found in our research when we did visit uh, Washington, D.C. and dug, dug deep into some records. And that picture used to belong to Helen. Uh, so we know it is James for certain. I'm going to shift gears here just a little bit. Susie and I went to see a movie lately, and I promised to come back to Paget. We went to see this movie called The Jesus Revolution. Now, it's not because we're diving back into Christianity, uh, Orthodox Christianity. That particular movie just happens to be about a reverend here in Southern California, and the name of the movie came from a Time Magazine article, and that's what it looks like. Time Magazine did an article about this preacher from, from uh, California, Newport Beach, exactly. And the, the, the story is about this preacher who's struggling in his congregation. And it is a terrible time of war. It's the, during the 60s, the Vietnam War. There is a counter-revolution of young people that became known as hippies. And the hippie population was growing. His church was struggling, and his daughter just about dared him. Well, it, you know, Jesus hung around with tax collectors and prostitutes and, and zealots. Why don't you reach out to the hippies? Well, he took up the challenge, reached out to the hippies, uh, one in particular who brought in thousands and thousands and thousands. But there's one point in the movie where he thought he had ruined the whole thing, and he's behind the scenes of the congregation. Uh, the, the ceremony's going on, but he's behind the scenes. And his wife comes to him and says, what wrong? what's wrong? And he's basically saying, I think I blew it. He had kicked out the, the, the lead hippie that, that, that he was using to introduce Christianity to, to more people. And he says, I think I blew it. And um, I'm paraphrasing. And his wife said, and this is what struck me, don't be so arrogant as to think that God cannot work miracles through a flawed man. And I just thought, wow, isn't that the truth? The rest of the story goes on. Uh, another man becomes baptized in their faith, and these two um, preachers go on to build Calvary Chapel, which now has, oh, oh like 1,100 churches throughout the world. Um, and that, that article was called The Jesus Revolution. But I thought, wow, isn't that the truth? God is working miracles through humans who are less than perfect, st stuck in the human condition, yet somehow plugged their way through to accomplish amazing works, true miracles. And isn't that exactly what Mr. Paget did? He was working, um, he was still working as an attorney in private, plugging away, receiving thousands upon thousands of pages of messages for what, what it was over six years, all the way up until the time of his death. And I could think of no better way to honor him. I think we need to have a divine love revolution. And we should start uh, there, something like that. Um, because if it wasn't for Paget and his lovely wife, Helen, we probably would not be sitting here today, at least not in the, the format that we know now, uh, as these messages have come. 
And then all the subsequent messages that have come from our spirit friends afterwards, um, it would be, it, it's just been an amazing uh, journey for the last hundred years. So I say let's move forward, honor Mr. Paget, and say, let's start the Divine Love Revolution. Thank you very much. Hmm. Amen, Dennis. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Uh, lovely. All right. So let me double check. Can everyone hear me? Very good. Okay. We're still there. Today, we celebrate James Edward Paget's success in bringing the truth of salvation to light after being lost not once, but twice in the history of our species. The truth was initially lost after the first parents chose independence from their maker. Because of their faithful choice, the father wisely withdrew the privilege of receiving the divine essence of love. Across the millennia, only a glimmer of the strand of truth could be glimpsed through the veils of prophecy, myth, and legend. This unbreakable golden thread of God's plan was further obscured as it navigated the warp and woof of countless societies that rose and fell through the ages. Jesus of Nazareth's incarnation brought the rebestowal of God's divine love and his earthly ministry brought the knowledge of how to receive it. Jesus recovered and wove this divine through line into a beautiful world saving tapestry nearly 2000 years ago. But within a few decades of his untimely death, his exquisite blueprint for abundant life was tattered and torn apart by the cross currents of human error. Still, the incorruptible and eternal thread of God's love continued to weave a course through the distortions and illusions of human history. After finding its way through more than 15 centuries of institutional ignorance and oppression, the filament of God's desire once again saw the light of day. The glowing fiber of divine truth revealed itself to humankind a third time through the divinely developed instrumentality of James Edward Paget. Through him, humankind received knowledge of the creator's unconditional love and the way of soul transformation. May we devote ourselves so that the truth of divine love may never again be lost to the ravages of human delusion. On this anniversary of the successful completion of James Edward Paget's earthly work, we give thanks for the truths transmitted through him with such clarity and effectiveness that we who gather here today know with absolute certainty the way to experience divine soul rebirth. Without Mr. Paget's faithfulness to his divinely appointed purpose, we would not be here now. We would be lost. And may we also remember that we would have no knowledge of the way to abundant life and immortality were it not for the dedicated efforts of others, our Heavenly Father, Jesus, Master of the Celestial Heavens, the Celestial Angels, Helen Hyde Paget, Anne Rollins, Dr. Leslie Rippenstone, and a great host of known and unknown souls. May their divinely orchestrated collaboration inspire us to advance together in common purpose. Let us follow their example and serve together in humility and harmony so that the Father's plan might be realized through us. The tireless efforts of multitudes over millennia have given us an unshakable launching pad for our unique and individual spiritual journeys. May we contribute our best to the growing movement these dedicated souls have made possible. May we be selfless servants in a diverse, harmonious, and peaceful global community that brings hope and healing to our troubled world. We who know the way of soul salvation need each other more than ever. May God knit us together with flexible yet unbreakable cords of love as stronger souls and growing structures of light are needed to counteract the compounding returns of humanity's long-standing investments in fear, ignorance, and arrogance. 
May we be one in God's love and work together so all may be inspired to choose divine soul transformation in this life and the next. Today, we express our heartfelt gratitude for James Paget and all who gave us access to the truth he received by rededicating ourselves to fully embodying God's divine love every moment of our lives. As we strive toward this ideal, we will bear witness to the Holy One's birthing of a new humanity and a new earth, a burgeoning, resplendent, multidimensional, superconscious reality of awakening souls enfolded and tenderly embraced within the eternal, incorruptible, and expansive fabric of God's divine love. May it be so for us all. Thank you. I pray you'll be all right and watch us where we go. Help us to be wise In times when we don't know Let this be our prayer When we lose our way Lead us to a place Guide us with your grace To a place where we find your love and hold it in our hearts when the stars appear above reminds us who you are let this be our be kind and watch us from above we hope each soul will find the essence of his love let this be our prayer just like every child with your grace give us faith so we'll be saved need to find a place guide us with your grace give us faith so we'll be saved Thank you, Dennis, it's so beautiful. <clears throat> I too just have a few brief words before I say the opening prayer here today. I recite a brief paragraph from Dr. Leslie Stone's testimony in reference to when he and Mr. Paget would come together in prayer on the nights that these messages would be received and others. He 
and I should say we, began to pray for the divine love, letting our soul longings go out to the Heavenly Father. And in time, a feeling came, glowing, involuntary, into the region of our hearts. We felt this emotion grow stronger and stronger with continued fervid prayers. And as we did so, our faith in God became solidified and absolute. Never before had he nor I felt so sure of the real existence of the Father and his divine love and mercy. The cold intellectual concept which we had entertained of him had, through prayers for his love, been transformed into a warm, glowing, living feeling of closeness and at one with the Heavenly Father, whose love and mercy and goodness we could sense were personal and real. Jesus calls this glowing in the center of the heart region, the sum of the soul's desires. And I read the, pre the preface to the prayer. The only prayer that is necessary is the prayer for the inflowing of this love. All other forms or real aspirations of prayer are secondary and of themselves will not tend to produce this love in the souls of men. This is the only prayer that humanity need offer the Father. It is the only one that appeals to the love of the Father. And with the answer, which will surely come, will come all the blessings that men may need and which the Father sees are for the good of his creatures. So my family continue to pray and have faith. And in the end will come a bestowal of the love like unto that which came to the apostles at Pentecost. Our Father, who art in heaven, we recognize that thou art all holy and loving and merciful, and that we are thy children, and not the subservient, sinful, and depraved creatures that our false teachers would have us believe but that we are the greatest of thy creation and the most wonderful of all thy handiworks and the objects of thy great soul's love and tenderest care, that thy will is that we become at one with thee and partake of thy great love which thou hast bestowed upon us through thy mercy and desire that we become in truth thy children, to love, and not through the sacrifice and death of any one of thy creatures. We pray that thou will open up our souls to the inflowing of thy love, and that then may come thy Holy Spirit to bring into our souls this, thy love, in great abundance until our soul shall be transformed into the very essence of thyself and that there may come to us faith, such faith as will cause us to realize that we are truly thy children and one with thee in very substance and not image only. Let us have such faith as will cause us to know that thou art our Father and the bestower of every good and perfect gift, and that only we ourselves can prevent thy love changing us. 
from the mortal to the immortal. Let us never cease to realize that thy love is waiting for each and all of us. And that when we come to thee in faith, earnest aspiration, thy love never be withholden from us. Keep us in the shadow of thy love every hour and moment of our lives and help us to overcome all temptations of the flesh and the influence of the powers of the evil ones who so constantly surround us and endeavor to turn our thoughts away from thee the pleasures and allurements of this world. We thank thee for thy love and the great privilege of receiving it. And we believe that thou art our Father, our loving Father, who smiles upon us in our weakness and is always ready to help us and take us to thy arms of love. We pray thus with all the earnestness and longings of our souls and trusting in thy love, give thee all the glory, all the honor, and all the love that our finite souls can give. Amen. And so you come today, my beloved brethren, to pray for the Father's love, that eternal blessing that shall be your saving grace. I am James E. Paget, and I come to you today to acknowledge your efforts and your commitment to the truth of the Father's love. How many have come close to this truth, but have turned away? How many misunderstand this truth and add embellishments and ideas to it that lead them down different paths and directions beyond the simple truth and the power of the gift of this love? I, for one, came a hair's breath from turning away. I was not committed to bringing through these channeled messages in the beginning. I was skeptical. I was even irascible in my rejection of Jesus' first attempts to bring his message through me. And yet, Jesus, with all his humility and love and persistence, continued to work with me, to be by my side, and for some time, my constant companion. For this is what it took to bring me into alignment with the truth and with Jesus's efforts to bring the truth to humanity. Now, if I had turned away, I'm sure that there would have been others down the road who would have listened. But indeed, the time that I lived and the conditions that I lived within, a great war was raging. There were many changes and events in the world. 
They were both wondrous and horrific. This was the time where these messages were required more than ever. And yet, as I look around me today in your world, I see that this time as well is in great need of transformation and harmony. And so I urge you, my beloved and beautiful friends, to bring the message of God's love to those who will listen, to live the message of God's love, with every breath you take, to acknowledge this message no matter where it may have come, no matter what words inspired you. But indeed, you opened your heart and soul to God in response to these promptings. And this is what is needed in your world. Those who are willing to be vulnerable to God, those who are willing to stand up for the truth, those who can put aside their judgments and all conditions that are not of love and walk in the light of his love, be his instruments is channels of love. For the world is in great need of change and the world will change. You have been reassured of this. And will you be active participants in a changing world? Will you allow yourself to be transformed with this great gift of love? Will you walk in the light and be a light? Will you speak of truth and be that glowing light of truth that shall shine upon many souls and be God's instrument for this purpose? It is for you, my beloved friend, to take up the banner, the torch of truth, to walk forward. If you wish to honor me and the work that was accomplished through me, then I say to you, be God's instrument of truth. Walk in the light of truth. Do not allow your doubts and fears to overtake you and turn you away, but march forward, ever forward into the light. And God will ensure that your soul will find its transformation. It will be redeemed in love. And in time, you too will enter the celestial kingdom. This is God's promise to you. This has been stated in many different ways, through many different channels and mediums and instruments, Jesus being the most prominent and powerful of those instruments. Will you be God's instrument? Will you proclaim the truth? Will you walk in the light? The world needs you, my friends. The world is in deep need of you. May you find your way to those gifts and purpose that reside within your soul. Finding all the treasures that lay within you. All that is there that may be expressed and developed through God's love. My blessings are with you, my friends. I thank you for your tributes. And I, in turn, give you a tribute 
for you have overcome the barriers and the resistance and all that is in the human condition to be with God in the truth of his love. How wonderful you are, beloved souls of God, his children, coming to be with him, leaving behind the vestiges of an old and tired ideas of the human race and seeking something new and fresh yet old and ancient, the power of love to transform you and all that which is around you. May we walk together, my friends. May we truly be an instrument for God, a channel for his love and truth, and that many may find comfort and healing and a path to atonement with our great creator. God bless you, my beloved friends. And I thank you dearly for your tributes. I'm James Patchett. My love is with you. God bless you. May the peace and glory of his love reign upon you, beloved souls. My disciples, all who carry the banner of truth. I am your brother and friend, Jesus, and I come to bless and to uphold and to encourage you, my beloveds, upon the path divine. May the gifts of his love continue to awaken you, refresh you, and transform you. It is given freely to those who seek it and ask for it. It is given to each of you who have found your way to this truth. It is given to all souls who are eager to be with God and his love. I bless you, beloved souls, each one beautiful lights, beautiful souls created by God in all the wonderment and glory of God's creation. May you be blessed and uplifted. May you come to know the purity and grace of a soul transformed in love. May you know the peace that passes all understanding. May you be free of the burdens of this dark world and walk in the freedom and light of the Father's hand upon you. God bless you, beloved. God bless you. My love is with you. I am Jesus, master of the celestial kingdom, and your brother and friend. God bless you.
May the path of truth be yours, my friends. I am Yogananda. I come to demonstrate that the truth of God's love may be expressed through many different individuals who come from many parts of your world and many aspects of the world of spirit. For the truth knows no boundaries. The truth of God's love is available to all. Do not think that because you have your idea and concept of truth, that this is the only approach, the only way. It is indeed a powerful way and a clear road that you take. But there are others in your world who are seeking truth and seeking God. And they may not use your words. They not, may not see things from your mindful perspective. But indeed, you and they have hearts aglow with the desire to be with God. And so I urge you to embrace your brothers and sisters who are not of your ilk and culture and ideas. For this is meant to be a truth that is available to all and is carried to all corners of the world. May you truly be that instrument of love without any inhibition or prejudice, or fear, but pure love, my friends, pure love, for this is what will change the world. And so you are given a great advantage and blessing. Utilize this to the best of your abilities. Express it through your highest self, your soul, and be truly one who walks in the light. In this way, many will be drawn to you. And even those who do not understand your language, your words, will feel your light and that which glows all about you. This is the power of God's love, the great blessing of his love. Be that blessing, express that gift in all manner and ways that God has imbued you with those gifts that you carry, those aspects of your soul and your being, expressing love, expressing truth. May God bless you, my friends, and keep you on the path to buy. I am Yogananda, and I am privileged to speak with such wondrous, souls who have come to assure you upon the path. I am humbled and I am grateful for this opportunity. God bless you, my friends. I am Yogananda and I love you. I love you dearly, brothers and sisters of souls awakening and lights glow in truth. God bless you.
Let me gather with you, my friends. I am your teacher and friend. Confucius. There are many from the world of spirit who gather around you at this time. And you have been brought to a place, a gathering place, high above the earth plane. Each of you are there in your spirit bodies. Though some of you feel firmly planted upon the earthly plane, I assure you that you are part of this gathering. And indeed, we all gather together to honor our friend. And indeed, we will honor him for all eternity, will we not? Or does his choice and effort to bring the truth of God's love through him to humanity? Did not our beloved brother Jesus choose well in this great effort? Or indeed, what came through him is full of truth. The books that are published from this glow in light. And some are able to see this and recognize it. So many, so many have benefited from these efforts. And you have, many of you have. So I acknowledge you, my friends. I see you as the forerunners to a great movement, a great effort in your world to eradicate the conditions of error and darkness and bring forth light and truth. May you be successful in your ventures, for God has you firmly in his embrace. And God will continue to protect you and guide you in these efforts, my friends, beautiful children of God, may you be blessed. May you be blessed, deeply blessed. God bless you. Confucius loves you, beloved soul. I love you. You are loved by many, and God loves you beyond measure. God bless you. I honor you all in love and truth. And I'm Helen. I merely wish to say a few words of acknowledgement to my dear husband and soulmate, how much I love him and I too honor him for his work. For I have benefited and many, many souls have benefited from this work that Jesus initiated and my dear Ned, 
accepted his invitation. And so we are here, 100 years in the future, where I see that the word of God's truth and love continues to flourish in the world. And it will grow, my friends. It will grow and be commonplace in your world. Have faith in this, pray for this, and be a part of the proliferation of this truth. May God bless you. I am Helen, and I too work for the truth and the dissemination of this truth, not only in your world, but in many worlds, in the spirit planes. God bless you. God bless you all. My love is with you. O oh, gracious and beloved God, we thank you for this time in prayer, for all our beautiful angel friends, and for our dear friend James and his efforts so long ago. May we continue to bring the truth of your love forward. Guide us, dear God. Envelop us in your protection, your light, and your love. Help us to find ways and means of bringing this truth to many. Develop our gifts in your love. Help us to be focused, to have that dear and true soul longing to be your instrument, your channel of love and light and truth. And may you bless all those who are making this effort. May you bless all those who are curious and seeking this truth. And may you bless all the souls who are yearning for the touch of your love, its comfort, and the power of its transformation within. That they may find their way to this truth. And if any of us can be an instrument to bring this forward to any other soul, may it be so. May we be blessed and know your guidance towards them and towards fulfilling your desire for all to know the truth of your love. We thank you, dear God, and we love you. Amen. Wow. Oh my goodness, that was so, so powerful. Um, we'll take just a minute to let Al have an opportunity to say a few words and then a closing song. And then we'll have a part two. If anyone is able to stay and have a discussion with our three guest speakers and uh, with Al and I. Uh, Brooke is keeping the Zoom room open for us. So, Al, what was that like for you? 
Wow, what a lineup. So. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, as I've said this many times, I have no idea what the plan is. So I as was am very delighted as to what uh, transpired and how lovely. Well, even those of you who said your words uh, acknowledging Padre, you did beautiful, beautiful job. And then it just flowed, did it not? Just kept flowing. And uh, uh, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful to be a part of this and to be uh, blessed by the efforts that James Padgett made and uh, to know this and how the books, I mean, I can tell you stories as to how these books came into the hands of certain people who uh, informed certain people who informed us, you know, it's a chain of of truth that goes along. So don't inhibit your words with others or give a book, give a pageant book to someone or leave it somewhere, whatever it might be. But these truths need to be given out into the world and uh, there are many ways to do it. So I encourage you, my friends. I encourage you. Well, maybe, you. maybe that's a good way to start our discussion. Um, but in closing, um, Dennis, are you ready to take us out on a sacred song, a joyful song? A joyful song. That was joyful. Thank you, Dennis. And I have a special invitation now for everyone here. And that is that we all gather again in a hundred years time 
we'll be in spirit, but Maybe. let's, um, how many are, are willing to uh, make that commitment? And uh, we'll just look down on the earth plane and see how they're doing. And if we all multiply James's efforts, I mean, Bill and I were talking today and we figured he probably was only really praying for divine love about nine years, eight years of receiving those messages and nine years of praying for divine love. How many here have been praying for divine love more than nine years? Anybody? Anybody? So imagine, just imagine what can happen in the next hundred years and we will all, all be part of it. So thank you, Dennis and Bill and Cliff and Elle and James and um, who was then after James was... Jesus. G oh, excuse me. Sorry, Jesus, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then, Confu no, Yogananda. And Confucius. Then Confucius, then yeah. Helen. And, um, you know, we're going to change the numbers. In another hundred years, the numbers are, are going to change, right? But um, we hope you can all stay. Um, but to those of you who are leaving now, we thank you for your prayers adding to this beautiful time.